Today, in our search for a new desktop, we're going to do two things. We're going to install and review Ease Desktop V5, which is our first desktop. And we're going to configure a multi-boot system under Xboot that allows us to start our Atari up with either desktop at a click of a button. That way, when you get the hard drive image that I'll post online after most of these videos, you can boot that up and just swap between the two desktops and try them for yourself. It should be a lot of fun. Okay, there are a couple of very small changes that I've done to the Falcon image between the last video and the current one. I'm just going to quickly go over them. So firstly, I swapped my desktop wallpaper over from Joker to Harlequin. Simply, I prefer it. And secondly, I've kind of changed the way I store the install and configuration files for these videos. So I've created an episodes folder in the root of C. And under that, I create a folder for each episode. That way, I don't have to keep showing you guys that I'm booting into Emutos copying files from my Gemdos D drive over to the Mint C drive, etc, etc. That's just boring. Here I am, and under Episodes, I have subfolder 25 and that's for today's video and this is my 25th episode which is a bit of a landmark for me really I mean, so forgive me for patting myself on the back I nearly sprained my neck doing that right onwards and downwards I just want to point out one thing missed from a previous video so when we were describing my AES I missed out a pretty neat feature of it that I simply forgot to show and that's this it supports four corner resizing of windows and that's something that we haven't seen in any of the Atari configurations we've tried so far Teradesk Neodesk Gem itself they've always been bottom right hand corner resize and I think that's just such a neat feature Let's get to installing Ease V5. Now I got these files from the Abandonware Apps page on Atari Forum, and I'll stick a link to that in the description. We're gonna run the setup program, and when we do that, we see a page to enter our details. The serial number, by the way, is in the zip file on the Abandonware page. And then we click OK, and this is gonna be a very quick install on this machine. I'll take all of the options. Now the choice of installation folder to me is interesting. You can call it what you like, but it can only be in the root of the selected drive. Previously, I tried to actually create a desktops folder in C and install it under that. But when I booted into it, it just didn't pick up its resources properly. So I had to move it back into the root of C, which is kind of disappointing. I hope the other desktops are more uh, flexible than that. And the final thing is I don't have Magic C installed, so I don't want to use it. Now that we have Ease installed, how do we get it to start at boot up? So let's navigate to u slash c slash gemsys slash my AES. And if you cast your mind back to the last episode when we installed and configured my AES and there should be a link to that on the top right ish of the screen right now. The desktop is actually started through values in the desktop.conf file. So let's take a quick look at that. Currently, it's configured to run Teradesk, which is installed in U Mint version sysroot opt gem Teradesk desktop.prg. And the AV server and font select, which is the font selector, are set to Teradesk via the value desktop. So we need to modify these values to point to easiest desktop. But the first thing I'm going to do before that is I'm going to open up desktop.cnf and save it as dt underscore terra.cnf. That way we don't lose the config and we're going to want to use it later. Ah, yeah, and um, Terra is misspelled. Never mind. So opening up desktop.cnf once again, let's point it to Ease Desktop. The shell is u slash c slash ease slash ease dot prg. And I'm going to set the AV server and font cell to ease, and that's padded to eight characters with spaces. Those spaces are important. Okay, let's do the bravery test, reboot, and see if he spins up. And there she rides. Now we got a little dialog flash up there saying Ease was adapting icons. That's it's not a one-time operation because it happens every time you change the resources, but it's a rare message. You should never see it unless you're editing icons. On the desktop, we have our drives A, B, C, and D, which doesn't work, and memo, printer, and Dustbin rather than trash can. Sounds British to me. So excuse me while I do a little tidy up. Before we get to the meat of the functionality, let's talk about the memos app or component, whatever you want to call it. When I demoed Neodesk in a previous video, I showed its desktop notes. And these were completely useless, to be honest. They were unmovable, difficult to read, and the positioning of them was based on some weird grid system that was not flexible at all. That surprised me, as I recollected that Neodesk worked like this does. And I think actually what's happened here is over the years, my memories of the ST and that all of the desktops that I used and I used all of them kind of all got conflated. So in, in my mind's eye, I had features from Ease and Neodesk and features from... I actually thought all of these things were in Gemini when boy was that wrong. Never mind, it's just an aside. 
Okay, so I'm going to pick a gaudy yellow text color for our note or our memo, a nice blue background and a lighter blue border, and we'll see what we get. I like this actually. We can move it around the desktop, double click to edit it. We can amend the colors and the text or delete it if we wish. And I actually like this color scheme. It reminds me of the CPC 464 in both color and font. And the CPC 464 is my favorite 8-bit computer of all time. And yeah, I misspelled the word message, but my dyslexic brain didn't spot it until too late. I'll fix that before I put the image up online. Right, so if we hit the File Explorer now, and as you can see, Ease has support of 256 color icons and a pretty decent set of built-in icons. It comes with a powerful icon editor that we'll come to in a bit. But let's focus on the File Explorer. It has this toolbar and it's packed full of functionality. So the first icon is Size to Fit. Next, we have a button that toggles between icon view and text view, and we'll come back to text view in a minute. Then there's a filter button that allows us to select from preset masks. So for example, we can filter for sys files, which is good. And now we reset the, set the filter back to all. Next, we can select the font to use for the content. Now I only have the system font installed. That's actually a monospace font. So changing the font doesn't lead to the nicest looking of things, but let's try, let's try monospace 821, which is an okay-ish font. Now we come to the next button that allows us to set the font size, which works nicely. Moving on, we have a button that allows us to choose the file attributes to show. So we can pick a uh, date, time, file size, etc. Now this second off last button allows us to specify the sort order. And then the last button is a cycle windows button. So to demo this, I'm just going to open a couple of other windows. Now, as I click the cycle window buttons, we move from window to window to window, which is very good. Oh, by the way, on screen at the moment, we can see one of my minimal requirements for our new desktop. That is each file explorer window has its own layout and settings. So I can mix and match text mode and icon mode in different windows. I want to have a look at the uh, default built in file viewer. So I'm going to open my AES.conf. So the file viewer does its job, right? It actually views files. It's nice. It's fast and it's got a clean interface. It also has a similar toolbar to the file browser with options to size to fit, choose a font, set the font size and cycle windows. So you can cycle between viewer windows and file browser windows. I think this is a really nice file viewer and actually beats the one in NeoDesk. And NeoDesk is kind of my baseline for comparison. It's got to be better than NeoDesk if I'm going to use it. Okay, I want to have a quick look at some settings. Now I'm only going to talk about a couple of these settings, but what I want to do is move through the different settings tabs and just so you can see what type of settings are available. And if you want to, obviously you can pause the video and read the text and see what's there. One setting that I am interested in, however, is this always send parameters option for Ease Desktop. So Ease is operating as an AV server. So it's going to be in charge of telling apps that things have changed or telling them to load files or telling them that a window is closed. So when you select always send parameters, what it means is imagine, for example, you've got QED open and you're editing a file and then you drag another file under the desktop icon. If we've got always send parameters switched on, Ease will tell QED that there's a new file there to load and it will load it in a new window, but you will only end up with one copy of QED in memory. Another feature that I think is a bare minimum. Now, the other thing I like about the settings dialog in Ease is that when I tab off a page, if you've made any modifications, it will ask if you want to persist your changes. Previously, I've mentioned my frustration in NeoDesk and other systems where you make a change to a setting and it works for your session, but you've forgotten to press the save settings button in the desktop. And when you reboot, you have to set those settings again. And it's just an annoyance. This means that doesn't happen in ease. So that's a big thumbs up from me. One other thing we can do here is we can hide our non-functioning D drive. So I'm going to do that. Quit settings. And say update drives and it's gone. Now we're going into the binaries folder here for ease. I think I've already said that it's got the Minesweeper thing, but the other thing it's got in here is the icon editor. Let's take a quick look at icon editing. So when we try to launch the icon editor in our current desktop, 
we get an error to say that it can't run in color modes above 256. So I was gonna swap my desktop to 256 colors, and then I find out I can't change resolution inside of E's desktop. Now I don't know if that's, again, a part of E's being a little old in the desktop, so it doesn't understand Mint or My AES or XAES or anything like that, or if it's just a bug. However, there is a workaround to this. We're going to boot into Emutos and set it into 256 color mode. All right, I'm going to run the icon editor and we'll have a cursory poke around it. So let's open Ease's icon file. And this icon editor, by the way, works very similarly to the one in NeoDesk, which I think I covered in a lot more detail in a previous video. I'll try and find a link. Let's open a file icon. So in the same way as NeoDesk, this is rule based. You can see it's a rule that matches the icon against a single file name, which is designer.prg. And it's a rule for a file. Clicking edit, we're faced with a well-featured icon editor. You can edit the image or the mask. And here's our palette of 256 colors, which people who are way more artistic than me could do a lot with. Now let's have a look at another rule. This one matches three different file names, Phoenix, Phoenix2, and Phoenix2 underscore one. And it's a folder rule and it uses this icon. So functionality for matching multiple rules is beating NeoDesk by a large margin. NeoDesk required one icon file per rule. So if you wanted to match those three Phoenix Air folders, you had to create three cloned rules with three cloned resources, all taking up memory and space to achieve that. So this is a big tick for me. And finally, just to highlight it, you can create new icons. And again, this is really powerful. Some of these desktops that we're going to look at come with icon managers, which are not icon editors. They allow you to associate icons and stuff, but they don't allow you to create them. So this is another thumbs up. Let's boot back into Ease. So, so far it's been all upside for ease. It's looking really good, but obviously here comes the downside. And it's this. If you look at the icons for the folders defined in the mint.cnf file as symbolic links. So for example, the opt icon is actually linked to the folder C mint version sysroot opt. But here they're appearing as files, not folders. And if I double click this, it doesn't show the folder content. It just shows this error message. Now, I don't know if this is a surmountable problem or not. I doubt it is. I think Ease must predate the introduction of Mint and it doesn't use the correct Gemdos calls to support symbolic links. And this is kind of like a massive down check for Ease. If it's going to be our desktop replacement, because this is a series about Mints. Mints. This is a... S but this is a series about Mint. I mean, could we live without the U drive support? Yeah, we could go through C, but like I say, this is a series about Mint. Right, configuring desktops. So at the beginning of this episode, I promised an XBoot config that would allow us to boot straight into either desktop at the click of a button. Previously, if you recollect, we'd saved our Teradesk config to DT underscore Terra. So now let's save the current desktop.conf as DT underscore ease.conf. And now we're going to reboot. Here in XBoot, we're going to create two sets. One that boots into Teradesk, and one that boots into Ease. And to do that, we'll add commands to the sets that copy the files dtterra.conf over desktop.conf or dtease.conf over desktop.conf. Desktop.conf being the file that my AES actually loads to find its shell program. As the current shell set in default.cnf is actually Ease at the moment, we're going to start with Teradesk. That way we can test it more easily. So let's create a new set and call it mint Teradesk. As is quite common in this episode at the moment, that's misspelled. It should only have one R and therefore I could have put the E in it. I will definitely fix that before shipping the image. I'm going into the command list for our new set and I'm going to type in the following, which is copy slash gemsys slash myaes slash dtterra.conf space slash gemsys slash myaes slash desktop.conf. And I'm going to save that. And we're going to boot into it. Here, in a blink and you'll miss it moment, you can see that xboot logs the commands it's executing. But I mean, thank goodness for whole frames or you wouldn't be able to see it in real life. When we get into the desktop, we're in Teradesk. Hey! Now, let's repeat that process for a new set called mint-ease. And this time we copy the dtease.conf over desktop.conf. Save that, boot into the set, and we're in ease. 
So as we say, where I come from, jobs are good. Okay, we set out to do two things in this video. Review the Ease desktop and set up a multi-boot system to allow us to load and test different desktops. And we've nailed that. So my thoughts on Ease are, it's a very, very capable modern desktop, but it's let down by its lack of support for the universal drive. And I'm going to leave it at that for now, because my theory is once I've done all of the desktops, I'll then do a wrap up video of some sort where I'll put up a feature matrix. We'll have some ticks and crosses. And then what I want to do is put up a channel poll and let's vote on what we think the best one is. By then you'll have had a chance to play with all of these. And then I will use that desktop probably for the rest of this series. But in the meantime, let me know what you think of what you've seen in this video in the comments below. I always enjoy reading and replying to your comments. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.